live streaming once again with some more NBA news. This is actually coming um, from Woj and uh, well, other champs obviously also did it as well. But there's a couple of things going on right now with the Utah Jazz. They've decided to make a couple moves today. Some of you guys may have obviously known about these moves. Some of them include um, Jordan Clarkson and Utah. So pretty much the trade that actually happened today was Jordan Clarkson was traded to the Utah Jazz in exchange for Dante Exum and two second round picks. Obviously, when I initially did the live stream, I was pretty mad and everything at that. I was, you know, I, I thought it was absolutely crazy that they decided to do that. But yeah, the Cavs, they did it, um, obviously. And yeah, it's one of the weirdest trades I think I've seen. But I think now that I've come to talk about it, I feel like it's more, you know, evened out and all that stuff. Um, uh, what's happening with Kawhi? I've seen the post. Oh, about... Oh, I don't know. It's sort of a, the thing about he's joining NBA, uh, one of the NBA teams and all this stuff. It's like Lakers, Clippers. It was something that one of his relatives made a request about. But yeah, Jeff Green, Utah is officially waiving Jeff Green per league sources. This is, I'm very shocked about this. I had no idea they were obviously going to do this. Woj actually made um, a post as well saying Utah has agreed to a multi-year deal with guard um, Rajon Tucker, agents Reggie Brown uh, in, from Priority Squad Style ESPN. Tucker is an undrafted rookie out of, yeah, it pretty much goes on from there. He's been one of the best G League, um, most dynamic players. Utah is waving veteran Jeff Green to create a roster spot. So, yeah, Jeff Green is officially done. He has just been waived for a G League player, which is absolutely crazy to think. Like I talked about earlier, um, Utah and how I think their team is going to be very good. Getting Jordan Clarkson now, that's obviously a very good thing. But now as well, I thought, you know, Jeff Green, he's, he's a really good asset. He's, he's a good player in my opinion. When he played for LeBron in the finals of the Cavs, it's one of the most, you know, memorable parts of his career that I have. I thought he was very, very good with LeBron. So, yeah, I'll probably be making a separate video as well talking about why I think he should potentially sign the Lakers and why the Lakers should also try and sign him. I mean, they missed out, missed out on Kamala Anthony. Now, he's absolutely playing very good for the Portland Trailblazers. So, Jeff Green, I doubt they're going to want to potentially miss out on as well. But I'm about to bring up the stats for Jeff Green. He's currently six in scoring for the Utah Jazz. He puts up okay defense. It's not great. It's not, I'd say, good. It's not bad. But yeah, he's 33 years old, 203 centimeters. He's played 29 games, and he's actually started two of those games, and I believe he was actually starting recently. I can't remember, but 18.4 minutes per game, 7.8 um, points, and 2.8 rebounds. Okay numbers, so it, it's very odd that he was waived. I really don't know why they pretty much decided to do this and get a, a rookie from the G League that was undrafted. I mean, they could have probably two-way this guy... I really don't know if they're going to put him in the rotation or if they have maybe other plays they have goals to potentially go after because, you know, they bring in Jordan Clarkson. Who says they won't try and do a couple more trades here and Ness? So I believe because they have waived Jeff Green, what, he's probably on maybe a $5 million contract. I can't really remember. That's just probably the estimate. A team most likely will sign him very recently. I believe that if a team does sign him recent, um, maybe the Lakers or whatever, then they don't have to necessarily pay his contract out fully and they can sign another player on the cap that they officially got rid of him for. So, yeah, and then I, I realized as well, in the last video I talked about Dante Exum being traded to the Cavs, was on about, you know, $11 million, um, was on, I thought he was only three year contract. Apparently he was actually signed to a three-year $11 million um, deal per year. The previous year, uh, last year, I think he was actually signed to that deal. Well, Jordan Clarkson's on about a $12 million deal. They get Clarkson in, they'll be able to potentially sign on like a three-year deal for maybe $8 million per year. They've already saved a bit of money from that. They'll most likely save money from this Jeff Green waving because I believe he was on about a $5 million deal. Which means, yeah, and the team will most likely sign him very shortly. So I could definitely see, you know, them having some cap space to potentially go after another play in the trade. Again, who that would be. I really don't know. Looking at their team right now, I kind of think they they may need a point guard. I mean, obviously, Donovan Mitchell can potentially play that point guard spot if needed. 
Mike Conley's been a little bit uh, injured recently and is definitely not having a good year. And I have no idea when he's going to be coming back from that injury. Besides that, they have Emmanuel Moutier, I guess, at point guard. He's an okay um, point guard. And they really don't have anything else now. Dante Exum obviously being traded. I really don't know who they should go after. Or, uh, after, sorry, a player, maybe, I, I don't know. I, obviously, I haven't done like my research on this or anything, but Lonzo Ball and Frank Nilekina. I know they're available. They're obviously guards. They can play point guard, shooting guard, and small ball, small forward. Like, I've seen Nilekina start at small forward this year for the Knicks. Not just maybe even once. I'm pretty sure I've seen it, like, multiple times. And Lonzo, I think, has even done some small forward roles this year with the New Orleans Pelicans. They could potentially try and get one of them in. Um, it's a biggish contract, considering they haven't really done exactly too much in their careers so far. They could try and bring one of them in. They really got Clarkson for nothing. They gave up a bad contract for a player who's been injured and hasn't even really been playing too much basketball. And they gave up two second round picks as well. They didn't even have to give up first. I believe they'll have their first this year, most likely. Again, I really don't know any plays that will be necessarily they could try and get. They could try and go for another star like, you know, DeRozan, Kevin Love, Blake Griffin. Again, I really don't think they're going to do that. A power forward is also something they desperately need. I look at their list right now. Who even starts for them at power forward? I'm pretty sure Bojan has literally been starting for them at power forward. And I really rate Bojan, but I don't know if it's necessarily the best thing to be playing him at power forward. I think he's better at small forward. Their starting power forward was actually Jeff Green, I think. So I have no idea. Well, obviously not the whole year, just the last two games. So I have no idea who's their actual... Um, power forward. I, I'm looking at their roster right now, and I'm pretty sure it's Bojan. So, power forward, they would definitely need, maybe, you know, because they've had a lot of contact in with the Cleveland Cavaliers. I mean, they've traded for Kyle Korver in the previous year where they got rid of Alec Burks, and now they've just traded for Jordan Clarkson. Maybe they might want to go and trade for Kevin Love as well. Wouldn't surprise me if they did decide to do that. Again, I have no idea, and I think it would obviously be kind of cool. I look at their roster, though, and I don't know, you know, as a Cleveland fan, I don't really know if I want to trade them, Kevin Love, considering they, I'm still on the side of they ripped us off in the Jordan Clarkson deal. What would they trade us for Kevin Love? Obviously, most likely Joe Ingles would be a part of it just because of his contract. It'd probably be something like Joe Ingles. I really don't know what other contracts they'd give us. Joe Ingles is going to be making like $15 million next year. Probably be Joe Ingles. Um... And maybe two first. That's what it could be. Maybe another player. I don't really know because Dre Ingles hasn't exactly been very good this year. And I don't think the Cavs are going to want to be trading them, you know, a border all-star for Joe Ingles and a couple first. Even though I really rate Joe Ingles and I think that he is still a decent player. I just don't think he would be good enough to trade for Kevin Love, if you guys know what I mean. But again, I don't really know. Maybe they could try and target Blake Griffin. But I, I heard that the Pistons are going to try and keep Blake Griffin for this year because of his value has, you know, obviously gone down. So they'll probably look to keep Blake Griffin and then trade Ingles in the um, next one. But, yeah, obviously they have a massive power forward problem at the moment. Jeff Green is... He's waived now, so I, I really don't know. Who... The new guy that they signed, though, I have no idea what position he is. Um... I wouldn't have a clue. I'm actually going to search it up right now because if he's a power forward, who knows? They might just want to bring him off the bench. Um, and yeah, I would presume it'd be a power forward. I mean, why would they go to the extent of waving Jeff Green to just... He's a shooting guard. Okay. I'm absolutely amazed. I have no idea what the Utah Jazz are really trying to do here. They're trying to compete, but they just waved Jeff Green. The only thing that I can think of of like a, a solution where maybe they're going, maybe they're hoping and planning on another team to potentially sign him in the next couple of days to a week or so, so then they can potentially you know get his cap back, trade for another player. They'll have you know maybe five million dollars of cap space left. I really don't know how much he's on. Who knows? Maybe he's only on two point five million. That's two point five million they've saved. Again. I have no idea what the Utah Jazz are really doing and what their goals are, but I would imagine they have some sort or somewhat of a plan. But anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel for all the latest NBA and sports content. 
Don't forget to comment in the comment section down below. What are your thoughts and opinions on the Utah Jazz waving Jeff Green? Do you guys think it was a good idea? Do you guys think it was a bad idea? And what do you guys think about the new G League um, player that they just picked up? And what do you guys think their plan may be moving forward? And do you guys think they should be trading for a power forward such as Blake Griffin, Kevin Love, etc.? I definitely would really like to know your thoughts and opinions down below. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my gaming channel and my iRoso vlogging channels. The links for them are also in the description down below. I've recently been putting a lot of NBA 2K content on there. So it'd be really awesome if you guys did go and check that out. Again, link in the description down below to that channel. So make sure you guys leave a like, subscribe, and comment. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.